And uh, of course, Monday is our for motivation. Um, we're going to be joined by someone this morning, Samson Onlatunde, and uh, he's going to be looking at this topic. Are you competing or collaborating in this new normal? Mm, very good question. Wow, it's time for uh, some Monday motivation today. And we have Samson Olatunde joining us now. This guy is a digital entrepreneur. He's a speaker and a trainer and also uh, a coach. Uh, he is the founder of Africa's, uh, uh, it's a digital community of professionals, a digital co-tribe, a digital CEO tribe. Now he's joining us this morning to talk about this topic. Are you competing or collaborating in this new normal. How are you doing, Samson? I'm fine. Thank you for having me here this morning. Yeah, it's good to have you join us. Uh, I, I like uh, this a new concept or this uh, topic that you're bringing up today. Are you competing or collaborating in, in this new normal? If we're entering a new normal where uh, the world is changing, businesses are being turned uh, on their heads, what are the things that entrepreneurs and even business owners should be thinking about? Should they be uh, fighting for their own space or should they be collaborating <laughs> with others? It is very important for us to understand that things has really changed. This pandemic has opened our eyes to different opportunities. And then if you're going to be uh, relevant in the market space, then you need not to compete or to collaborate. Now, once you compete, what happens is that you drain your energy and then when you collaborate, what happens is that you amplify what you're doing. So I usually tell people that in this digital space, one of the things entrepreneurs need to understand is how to collaborate. So just imagine that we don't have um, Amazon. Amazon has no, no, has no stores or a lot of collaborations are going on on Amazon, for instance. Uber owns almost no cars, but there's a lot of collaboration between drivers and the owners of cars. Facebook creates no content, for instance. But many of us are using Facebook to do so many things for ourselves. Now, think of Alibaba. Alibaba has no inventory, but many of us are doing transactions on their platform. Airbnb owns no real estate, for instance. And then look at the level of collaborations happening and people doing business and making money on platforms by um, Airbnb. So if you look at Netflix, I tell people that cinemas are going to be shut down uh, very soon. TV channels are going to be uh, tuned to uh, Netflix because Netflix has provided a value added service. They, they have no TV channel, but there's a lot of collaborations going on. People are making money and have opportunity to have access to content on that platform. Bitcoin, for instance, has no physical coin, but in the international market is one of the currencies that we are using. So it's time for people to begin to think, act, speak, do collaboration as against competing in this part of the world. Now, Samson, uh, I, 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 like, I like the direction this conversation is going. I like the fact that you're saying uh, you've, you've talked about a number of global international organizations that are doing very big things uh, through collaboration. But in, in Africa and in Nigeria as well, what you have is uh, there's this digital gold rush. Everybody's trying to make a mark and make a little bit of money. So whether it's a business on Instagram, uh, co people coming up with new solutions in, in the finance sector uh, and things like that. So it feels sometimes like uh, if, if I haven't made my mark uh, in the digital space, uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I should try and make that mark first before collaborating because there's a, still a lot of competition going on now. What would your advice, uh, what would be your advice to African businesses, uh, considering that we have unique challenges here, what would be your advice to them in the area of collaboration or competition? I think the challenge we're basically having with a lot of um, uh, people doing business in this part of the world is not thinking far. I mean, I, I had uh, that storyline about how the color TV, the, um, the innovations and all of that. I think that many of us in business in Nigeria and in Africa are really thinking small. We can't see beyond uh, building a business that will be a legacy that people can ride on. Um, many businesses have failed because of this aspect of, I want to own the market share, I want to compete and all of that as against collaboration. It's even happening in the banking sector. I mean, everybody just have different cards and everybody is getting into the market space just because they want to buy. My advice is that we need to think global. We need to think collaboration. We need to uh, see how we can harness things together. Let me 
I'll give an instance, for instance, in the entertainment industry, I'm particular about uh, the comedians, see the level of collaborations. When anybody's doing anything, see the level of collaboration, see how big the industry is today. We ever imagine that people are going to be making money in that industry the way it is. That's the level of collaboration, of seeing how I can support somebody to make it happen for that person, and then it goes in a viral effect. Now, for us in Africa, one of the things we need to start thinking about, and I think there's a there's a level of knowledge. Many people don't understand how businesses are done globally, especially in this part of the world. It's just that everybody's competing to say, I want to make a landmark. Now, if you're going to make a landmark and you're going to be great in the industry, then you have to think of exponential growth. It is the aspect of the collaboration. But when you think in a way of arithmetic growth, then you have to be keep struggling and want to do it alone. Just imagine you um, having uh, good brains together. You could imagine the kind of innovation in, uh, uh, inventions that you can have available for many people to leverage on. Just the way we have all of this global platform I've, I've mentioned. For instance, we're really trying. We have the Jumia, we have the Conga, really doing a lot of collaboration. But how can we scale up? The, we have Cast 45 looking at a way of people can have access, uh, car dealers, people that want to sell their cars. Now, yeah. these, are, these are platforms that are really helping people, but I think we can do much more than we are doing currently. Now, I, I want you to talk to us about, um, uh, so you, you talked about the new normal, which is you know, a post-COVID world where, where things have, have changed and um, some you know, certain kind of industries have been revolutionized. I want you to make a, like a prediction. So if um, people are predicting that a lot of businesses will fail, many people will shut down. When you're talking about collaboration, are you also saying businesses should consider uh, mergers, consolidation of, of certain industries coming together and forming maybe one entity that is bigger and that can last longer? You just mentioned Jumia and Conga, for instance. Neither of them is making profit. It's been many years. Uh, yeah. They haven't yeah. made any profit. They're just, sinking, they're just sinking billions of mm -hmm. naira. What would you say, uh, collaboration or merger? Me, I would say merger, uh, because if they merge, that means they have a um, lot of resources they can put together. And that means that in terms of uh, hosting, their budgeting, reaching out to more people, everybody's attention will be tuned towards a particular platform. Um, so what has happened is that everybody, I mean, those, those, those two uh, um, organizations you're talking about, are, they are really competing. And in the essence of them competing, they have not made that mark or made the profit they are expecting. And up to now, they are still trying to struggle around that space. Now, now just imagine them coming together. Imagine the logistics, imagine the human capital, imagine um, all of those resources coming together, and imagine how they will uh, get attentions from people who want to do business with them. But well, why wouldn't they do it, though? Why, 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 why do you think they wouldn't do it? Because it, competition, <laughs> they're both competitors, not making profits. Why don't just come together? Like I said, I just, I just feel it's the mindset kind of thing that we have in Nigeria. We only want to own it to ourselves, not thinking of having it to go global. It's a mindset problem, and it's one of the things we have to uh, really deal with. I mean, look at the banking sector also. It's a really problematic uh, um, for us because as of today, we can have a, a, a very good payment system that can be acceptable globally. I mean, PESTA came suddenly and took everybody on our way. Look at what Paystack is doing now. This is what our banks should have done years back. As of today, we can't use, pay, we can't use PayPal in Nigeria. This is what we are expecting that the banking sector come together and make happen for some of us that are doing business globally. So it's, it's, it's really a problem uh, for me and it's a problem for so many people out there because they can't think how can we come together, merge, collaborate, and make things happen? I've given you a lot of examples wow. in the financial sector. And so these are really problems, and I think it's a mindset kind of problem for mm. us in Nigeria and Africa. Wow, thank you so much, um, Sam Salatinde, for, for pointing out uh, at least some direction for us in this area. You know, being an entrepreneur is really tough, and uh, you know, people yeah. don't want to give up their legacy or their personal business, but. Thank you for your advice, and I hope mm -hmm. that there are one or two people who are taking heart, uh, taking uh, some of this advice and considering collaborating this period. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.